Church. Blessed to be a blessing, we learn from every lesson. Mm-hmm. From rose and from the storm, now it's time to take position. Yeah. Love for everybody, we fight for social justice. Mm-hmm. Take care of our people and stay mm-hmm. on the mission. Mm-hmm. Blessed to be a blessing, we learn from every lesson. Mm-hmm. From rose and from the storm, now it's time to take position. Yeah. Love for everybody, we fight for social justice. Yeah. Take care of our people and stay yeah. on the mission.
God, our Heavenly Father, as we come this Sunday morning, this summer Sunday morning, Lord, we come thanking and praising you, thanking you for your many blessings. You've showered us with blessings. So we thank you, Lord, for blessing our uprising, our outgoing, our work, our labor, and our coming back home. Thank you for blessing us when we lay down for rest and restoration so that we may be renewed for another day. Thank you, Lord. And because of your goodness, Lord, and your mercy, we've grown us and brought us. And we're ready now, Lord, and that's why we're singing. We're, we're ready to surrender. Lord, those things that have been difficult for us to deal with, Lord, we surrender them to you. Lord, those heavy burdens that kept us up late at night, uh, the ones that we kept working on but didn't make any progress, Lord, we surrender them to you. Lord, these bodies of ours uh, that can wake up hurting all by themselves, doesn't have to have an injury or a wound. You're in control of the heart and you are the God who has the breath of life. God, we surrender these bodies to you. And Lord, these minds confused in the world that's so corrupted and has gone after made up stories and doesn't want to remember yesterday and, and doesn't want to talk about tomorrow. God, uh, we're praying for mental illness in the world uh, that's running the world. And God, we pray for the world that wants to be healed. But these things over which we have no control, but we thank you, you've captured our minds, you've captured our thoughts, and you're holding them hostage for heaven's glory. God, we surrender these thoughts to you. Now, God, as we prepare to go further in this service, free now, having surrendered, yeah, the burdens and the challenges are still here, but now they're in your hands, not ours. So help us to just walk in prayer and in patience, knowing that you're on the way. Bless the musicians, bless the choirs, bless all the temple servants today. And when the preacher comes, touch her, and we may be touched by you through her. This is our prayer. Somebody say in Jesus' name. Lord, we continue in prayer and let every heart say, Amen. Amen.
I just didn't do right. Yes. But Lord, you watched over me. Oh, yes. Both days, day and night. Your grace. Your grace brought me. I'm living this moment. Brought me, brought me justice, justice demanded that I should die. But grace and mercy said, oh no, oh no, we've already paid the price. You see, I once was lost, but thank God. Now I see it was because grace and mercy came along, came along and rescued me. Oh, your grace, your grace and mercy brought me. Yes, it did. I'm living this moment. Oh, yes, I am. Because. Because of you, Lord, I just want to, I just want to, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you to your grace. Your grace. It was your grace. Your grace. It brought me. our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Gospel Choir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We just want to remind everyone of all of the things that we have going on. We, uh, we know that on Wednesday the Bible study will continue from the book of Malachi. Excited about that, but more excited even is that the pastor will be back on that prayer call tomorrow morning. And I know you'll be looking forward to that. Amen, amen. I know he'll be looking forward to that. God bless you, everyone, everyone. And all of you who are traveling, we just want to say we are keeping you lifted in prayer. And those of you who are struggling with things, we're keeping you lifted in prayer. And we just are glad to be here in the name of the Lord. We want to remember that the golf tournament is coming up this Saturday. And there is information on the church website, Golf for Life. We know that uh, we have many golfers in the church, those who love playing golf. And so we know you will look for that information. Amen. 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 Do we have visitors with us today? We want to just welcome you as we always do. The choir will help us sing our song of welcome. Those regulars and those first-time visitors, welcome to you in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. There's a sweet spirit in his house. Yes, there is. Praise the Lord. 
morning, everybody. God bless you and thank you. Uh, praise God. It's a new day. Hallelujah. A new Sunday, a new opportunity to praise God. Another chance to get right with the Savior. We want to thank everybody who sent in the help, the women who have closing up the Women's Day with the final pledges coming in. It's already a victory. The carpet is scheduled, and uh, we're thankful that the house of God, the temple of our worship, is being cared for, and it is being maintained by the temple servants. Uh, praise God. Thank you. Uh, we want to uh, now encourage you. Uh, these young people with Golf for Life, uh, praise God. This is their major fundraiser. And it helps them all year, every week, even through the winter, going through the domes and things. Young people who are getting an exposure, you know, that uh, otherwise would, would they never get. And what a benefit, learning the, 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 the benefits, uh, hallelujah, the things that golf uh, can do for them personally and in their careers. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. So uh, we want to be in prayer for the ministry that continues. Let us pray. Turn to God, our Heavenly Father, thank you uh, for the charge you've given us, for the responsibility you've given us to, to take care of these young people. Uh, Lord, we, we want to make uh, leaders and executives and professionals and, and servants and, and all you know, community work. Lord, we want to uh, take the genius that you've put in the minds of these young people and give them a good chance. Give them a better chance than what they'd have without the blessing you help us give. So God, we come now presenting what you've helped us get, presenting the portion back, and praying that it continues to bless this ministry and those who come to you. This is our prayer. Bless every giver and every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. And let every heart say, Amen. 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 sacrifice. It's preaching time now, and I'll tell you, this choir is ready to go to get this preacher up here. Aren't y'all ready for some preaching choir? Yeah. Hallelujah. And this is a great choir. Uh, 
I'm going to change their name from the gospel choir to the summer choir. <laughs> Hallelujah, because they're getting us through the summer now. That's right. And uh, some of y'all may have recognized that this, they come on two weeks. But, you know, people do what they have to do to help the church keep going. Amen. Yeah. And we're having a great time. we got a great preacher because we know Reverend Alexis Wilson. And I don't have to say much because you all know her. She's on our staff working on her third master's and, uh, you know, being our uh, what we call our stream master. Hallelujah. That's a new profession that people are really going to have a lot of jobs all across the industry. Am I right about it? So we're glad we have one here and she is prepared to give us God's word today. After the choir sings, the next voice shall be here of the Reverend Alexis Wilson. Pray for her as she preaches for us.
So God, you have called me to this moment. So God, first of all, I say thank you. Thank you, God, for giving me another chance. Thank you, God. But now, God, you know where we're at. So God, I'm asking that you fill me up so that I am a full representation of you. Spirit, lead me where my trust has no borders. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O oh Lord. Be my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So y'all, when I was asked to preach, I was, <laughs> I said yes very hesitantly. Um, I didn't know what I was going to say. I had been feeling like God hadn't spoke to me in a while. And now, Lord, <laughs> what am I supposed to say well. to your people? I was barely able to be around people without tears and sadness creeping up. I didn't know how I was going to get up here and say something boldly, because y'all know I don't do it unless it's boldly. I, I began to listen to other sermons, and I was reading random scriptures, hoping something would pop out and inspire. I mean, this past week, I haven't slept. I, I've just been up talking to God, asking, what am I supposed to say? I had several moments when I was going to call you, Pastor, and, and just let you know, I don't really know if I can do this. I, I just couldn't muster up the strength and the courage, and God just seemed to be quiet. Well. Then last Wednesday night, I remember the sermon my father preached. And I had an excerpt of it on my phone that I listened to when I feel like I have forgotten his voice. And he begins by saying, this particular subject that I am going to talk about is going to make you aware of how precious Jesus really is. And then he began to read the King James Version. I know all you theologians. <laughs> Luke chapter 9, verse 56, and it reads, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. My father's subject was, and they went to another village. But yet, in his honor, let me allow a little remix and call it Trust the Reroute. In this ninth chapter of Luke, we find Jesus and the disciples understanding and ready for his mission to the cross. We start the chapter with Jesus giving the authority and the power to the disciples to go and be great. Yet, they clearly just wasn't, it, it just wasn't happening because midway through the chapter, we find Jesus holding a one-on-one -on -one with Peter to get clarification on who not only the crowd says he is, but who do those closest to him believe him to be. I, I sat in this space trying to understand Jesus in this moment because here he is rebuking demons, feeding the thousand, healing children, yet there is something inside of him that feels like those who know him intimately can't seem to separate his humanity from his divinity. Like, ha have you ever been, uh, uh, ever not really been concerned about what everyone else has to say, but what the people who are closest to you understand you to be? Like, a as if you were walking around just putting on a show. When you are fully aware the calling that God has placed on your life, and yet they are still trying to figure out who you are. Here is Jesus, 
like many of us today, trying to get those closest to him to the cross, yet they seem so concerned with everyone else. They want to have competitions about who is better. They can't figure out what they have going on. They don't understand the power and authority that they have within themselves. Have you ever been in competition with someone and didn't even know? Like, like, like you have this unwritten beef with you that you didn't even realize until they threw the first jab? Like, like what? Yeah. Jesus is trying to get his disciples to understand the journey that they are on yeah. and to notice that the power that is within them as well as the power that is with them. Jesus has come to the place where he realizes that there are people in the surrounding areas that recognize his power and are calling his name to heal and rebuke without his presence. The disciples in this moment were the first set of haters as they were being procrastinators of progress and trying to stop the force that Jesus was. Somebody right now is realizing that there are people in your life who, who know, they know your power but want to either keep it to themselves or yet they don't want to believe that it's real. They, they say your name in the room but don't invoke it when it's time to make moves. They, they know your creativity, your talent, your essence and just want to keep it all to themselves. This brings us to the current place in our text where Jesus is headed to the village of the Samaritans. In my studies, I found it very interesting that Jesus chose to go to Samaria. If you were like me, you instantly went to the woman at the well with all the husbands. So I had to look into why on this journey, Jesus chose Samaria. See, Samaria resided on the top of a hill. And on the top of this hill, it gave a military advantage because it was the middle of the flow. Wow. If I can set the scene for you so you can look at it, there is seas all around. You got the Jordan River, the Sea of Galilee, the Mediterranean Sea, and the Dead Sea. And then there lies a mountain. So when you look at the map in this high rising center in the middle of everything that flows, wow. it only makes sense that Jesus would send some folks there to let them know he was coming. Well, Yet we get to the place that when he gets there, he is rejected. Jesus, who spent the last of his days living out his calling and here at the place where he had once been before, is rejected. Can you feel the pain and disappointment that had to swell up inside of him as he remembers his mission and as he reads, as it reads in the King James Version, he shows up not to destroy but to save lives and here he was rejected. I mean, life, <laughs> life can reject you in ways that you have never imagined. Many of us has had to deal with situations, disappointments, health concerns, rejections, and well, life. I mean, has life hit you in a way that the sun rose, but it did not shine? That the sound of the birds chirping no longer brought delight, but was a painful reminder that it was a new day? That prayer was not an option, but there was nothing left to say. Have you ever felt so rejected in a place that you thought you were loved? There, there was no scripture that you could pull out, no book, no lecture series, or even the embrace that felt like pain. I, I don't know if it was just me, but has life ever hit you so hard that you thought you got up to dust your feet off, only to be ran over? And although you stood standing with a limp, somehow your legs get cut off. And now you are unstable without a crutch. Have you ever felt rejected? As if God has left, and so has your hope and your joy. That the ideal of being around people is a piercing reminder that everyone is being blessed but you. 
that you walk into rooms with smiling faces, yet there is a hole inside where joy has wit to crawl inside. Have you ever felt the pain of disappointment? The disappointments of life that have left you bitter, angry, and hopeless because you just can't believe that this is life. Has life ever had you sitting in darkness while wearing a cloak of sunshine for those around you? This feeling that as long as they don't see your pain, maybe, just maybe, it would disappear. Has life ever hit you with rejection? Here, we find Jesus, who had just came to save the village, being pushed away and rejected. Now, I had to stop and think, Jesus, why, why did you go back to Samaria? And I think it's because he realized he had saved someone once before. So there has to be more to save. I have to think that Jesus, knowing the Samaritans and the Jews had some fundamental differences, had to believe that even in the midst of their difference, there would be light. But he is met with rejection. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know me, what I really like about this text is the disciples. Mm -hmm. Because disciples came ready and willing to bust some windows out some cars. (laughs) There was this moment where, where they say, Lord, do you want me to call down the fire <laughs> uh, to release the power? And now the King James Version said it was James and John, but the NRSV says the disciples. So this leads me to believe that there was a team meeting in which they had a discussion on who was ready to jump, who was ready to run up and get done up. So you can tell it was intense because Jesus didn't give them a passive no thank you, but there was a rebuke and a correction that says, yea, know not what manner of spirit ye are. I I, I can stand here today and tell you I know the feeling of the disciples. Here we have been rocking with this dude forever. I've been watching his power. I know what he's doing. And and you got the nerve to say no? You have the audacity to tell us no when we know the power that he has, but then it causes me to question the disciples and their understanding of who Jesus is. Many times we find ourselves as Christians being the disciples, following Jesus blindly, not having the faith that Jesus knows what he's doing. That that we sit in a space of the disciples saying, I'll ride with you, God, I'm following you, God, but yet not really understanding the power of Jesus. I I can understand the disciples wanting to defile the character of people, the need to lay hands in a non-spiritual way, the desire to pop off on someone. I know the feeling of the disciples. Here we are to save you, and again, you got the audacity to reject us. I, I, I remember pastor's words to me one day because sometimes I like to pop off. And what he said to me is, how is this beneficial to the kingdom? How? How does calling fire down on people we are called to save beneficial to the kingdom? How is is slaying or dejecting or defiling a character to people we are called to save helpful to the kingdom. How is snapping off, popping off, cussing out going to be beneficial to the kingdom? I understand the disciples. I I understand how they felt as Jesus says, just calm down. Here, we have finally reached our key verse and it says they went to another village. Church, I have found that there is something in the moments of rejection that brings out the power of God's reroute. That we have a tendency to believe that life is supposed to go one way and God will reroute our destination. See, I can imagine that Jesus knew he had a place in Samaria. Old girl with all the husbands, we we know she had a big house. Or maybe someone from the crowds had heard his name and recognized him, so he was aware that he would be the place that they would finally get to rest. Mm -hmm. Jesus. (laughs) Jesus. 
I understand you think this, that you think. This is the job, the relationship, the final health report, the next step to your journey, and God uses the rejection in this situation to reroute you. Somebody needs to hear today that there is power in the reroute. That just when you feel like you are alone like Naomi, just when you feel like you gotta go back to your mama's house, there is a roof in the journey with you. That just when you find yourself in the pit busted and disgusted like Joseph, there is a reroute to the kingdom. And just when you are trying to fulfill the promise without God, God will remind you that she is the creator of all things like Sarah. And that just like Job, when you have lost your spouse, your children, your friends, your clothes, your hope, trust in the reroute that God has planned for you. And the reason why you know you have to trust is because here's what happens next. Uh, once they were rejected, the next verse goes to say, Jesus no longer had to look for a place to rest. The place came to him. Isn't it grateful that you don't even have to ask, but that God is going to show up with what you need? Isn't it wonderful that you don't have to worry about what the reroute is going to look like, but you know that God is going to make it happen? Oh, isn't it your shout when you don't know what it seems like, what it's going to be like, or even how it's going to feel? But you know that God is in the reroute, that all Jesus had to do was state his need. Have you stated your need to Jesus? Have you let Jesus know what you needed? Can, can you call on Jesus? to say here is what I want not not in Jesus name later but when you began with Jesus me and you are going to journey God whatever you have for me Lord I surrender it all all to you I surrender so that when you know that it is time to release that no rejection no disappointment no pain no hurt can come against you because God has a reroute and a plan for you I, 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 I know pastor that I didn't want to preach today then I realized maybe the problem was me that that maybe the problem is someone is watching this morning that have been trying to hold on to your original plan of life right. trying to maintain the ideas the thoughts the dreams and people that no longer serve us in this next leg of our journey that, that now is your time to get rerouted. That someone right now is watching this, and to be honest, you've been struggling life uh, with life for a long time. That, that you sat there fighting and fighting and fighting with God unnecessarily. That you have caused your own problems. Did you realize you're your own issue? That at this point, God is saying, I'm waiting on you to trust. Trust the reroute. Trust the direction I'm going to take you in. Trust that even in the midst, just like your GPS, when you make the wrong turn, that I got something for you. That you, that God has something for you that you don't even know is coming. All you have to do is ask. Someone else right now is sitting and suffering in silence. There's not enough edibles or vodka to relieve that pain. That God is calling you to say, if you just trust, if you just trust the journey that God has for you, and it's not easy, but you really got to walk like the disciples, not knowing where you're going, not knowing how you're going to get there. As Jesus told them early in the game, just, just come on, don't bring nothing, just your body. And maybe today God is just saying, if you just bring your body, all I need is your body. All I need is your heart. All I need is your soul. All I need is for you to let go of what you think it's supposed to look like and trust that what I have planned for you is much greater than anything you can think and or imagine. Trust the reroute. Someone hasn't prayed since the pandemic started. Someone felt like being in the building was the only connection that you had to God. That, that the only way that God is moving is if you sit at this altar. So, someone is watching and, and, and you're doing this strictly out of routine. 
that there's no relationship. You just know that your mother knew, your grandmother knew, and the people before you said that you were supposed to go to church. But can I, can I ask you to have a relationship? Have, as the songwriter says, have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. <laughs> I, I, I don't know about you, but there, there is someone, someone who is watching who, who doesn't understand the relationship you can have with God. That, that this is more than songs, and, and, but you have a worship inside of you that God is waiting to bring out. In this new season, we have learned several things in this pandemic, and you have a calling. You have a calling that you've been sitting on, and God is waiting on you to reveal it. God has brewed something inside of you, and you've been scared. Don't be scared. God has something for you, and it is going to be amazing when it happens. But you have to trust. You have to give up, stop fighting, go see your therapist, talk to your pastor and your ministers and say, God, I'm tired of fighting. All I want to do is live the life you desire for me. And when you're able to do that, the reroute, the reroute will be beautiful. The reroute will, will move you in a direction that you didn't even know you could go. But just trust, because you can't even imagine what it's going to look like. You can't see it. You can't feel it. You just have to trust and know that God is with you. DuPage, trust the reroute. Trust that God is ready to journey with you. It's about 10 of us on staff. Someone can journey and walk with you. There's a prayer if you need, because sometimes we recognize you can't pray for yourself. Sometimes you don't have the ability to talk to God on your own. So you have an intercessory prayer team that can call. And someone will call and pray for you. Sometimes you need to hear somebody else's words to lift you and pull you out. So join us knowing that you are looking for DuPage. You're watching because you're looking for something. Let us be the place. Let us be the reroute that you have been looking for. The information is on the screen. You're not watching the stream by accident. You're not listening in the car. You didn't scroll on Facebook and stop for no reason. We are looking for you just as much as you are looking for us. This is a team effort. Somebody else's. It's like the disciples. You, you've been rocking with God. You've been rocking with the church. But you have yet built a relationship with God. And God is saying, I, I, I need you to come to me. This building, we ain't even been in. So I'm looking for you to come and build a relationship with me. And in that, you'll connect with people who have the ability to do what you need to do. And then maybe you were like me, and you just need prayer. That sometimes the rejection hurts, and you need someone to just say a prayer. So God, there is someone watching this stream right now who still is moving like the disciples. They're doing what you're asking them to do, but they have yet to have them build a relationship with you. So God, go into the homes of the people that are watching, speak into the ears and to the hearts of those who are viewing, to those who are in here right now, God. 
for they are needing you to come in and come through and work through them. Be with them in this moment, God. Know that rejection and disappointment only leads them to strengthen them into the reroute. It strengthens them for the journey, for the next leg that you have called them for. So right now, God, open their hearts and their minds. Let them hear. Let them know that you are walking with them. Let them know that you are journeying with them, that there is nothing and no one who can deter the route, the plans that you have for them. God, right now touch and anoint them touch them from the top of the head to the bottom of their feet let them know God that you are with them every step of the way that you have not veered out and in the moment of your silence that that is the moment they are to listen that in the moment when you speak that is the moment they are to move that in the moment when you God show up they are ready to show out so God right now we are expecting you to do something great for DuPage we are expecting expecting you to do something great for the Miller family. We are expecting you to move. Move like you have never moved before. And God, in that, we will give you all the glory. We will give you all the honor. And we will give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. rejected you and bring good news to the poor set the captives free give the blind sight and release the oppressed so that you can trust in God's reroute and stand in your power in Jesus name amen